So we're sitting here in the 2002 Tahoe and we got the double din in there and the amp is in there and everything's good except for one thing. It has come to my attention that hiding behind this glove compartment and I can get to it by pulling this over some. Pull it over to pull the tab out and this whole thing comes down. It has come to my attention that this right here is the factory amplifier. Because of the way I hooked my stereo up, I'm still running speakers through the factory amplifier. And not only is this a amplifier, but it's also a crossover control. One of the things that the crossover control does is it takes a lot of the lows out of the front speakers and pushes them to the back. So now that I've got a aftermarket amplifier, I'm not really getting the full benefit of my front speakers. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I've got two amplifiers in the mix, so when I turn the music up really, really loud, um, it distorts and sounds like crap. So I've done a good bit of reading on this, and basically anybody and everybody who's done this amp bypass uh, has commented about how much they love the sound of the stereo afterwards. So I have acquired one of these Metra 70-2002 harnesses, and it does say Saturn 00 to 05 harness, ignore that. Um, I'm gonna completely reconfigure this harness uh, so that it can be used to completely bypass this amplifier. And the only thing that I'll be missing out on is uh, uh, the rear tweeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the bypass. Okay, so I was looking for a way to graphically represent uh, the before and the after to try to help people who are more visual uh, in understanding what the deal is. And essentially what I've got here is a 2002 Tahoe. And essentially what we have is we've got stereo and we've got four speakers and a subwoofer. All right, that's all we've got the mix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna represent what your system looks like most likely. Okay, so from your stereo, you're gonna have some wires from the back of your stereo that go into this wire harness right here. And from this wire harness, surprise, surprise, you're gonna have some wires. Think of this purple line as a continuation of these little wires right here. This is going into a factory amplifier that's hiding. Um, in my particular car, it's hiding behind the glove compartment as previously shown. Now, from this amp, you've got all the wires going to the speakers. So I've just got these green lines here representing, and I forgot to send a green line to the subwoofer um, because it's powering that as well. So this is my stock scenario. Okay, so let's imagine for a moment that we're gonna add an amplifier in a perfect scenario. Here's essentially what we would have. We'd have power running from the battery to the amp. Here's the ground. We would have RCA cables that are running from our head unit to our amp to send the signals to the amp, and then the output of the amp would go directly to the speakers. This is best case scenario. Now, because my particular car already had all the wiring going to the speakers and all that sort of thing, I didn't want to redo the wiring for my speakers from the amplifier because that's a lot of work but my wiring situation is not optimal. I do not have the wiring going directly from the amp to the speakers. With my situation, I've got my aftermarket stereo installed, I've got my amp installed, and I've got the RCA cables feeding the signal to the amp. But what I have is my speed wire running all the information about the speakers back up front. And essentially that speed wire is plugged into the wire harness and then the wire harness is plugged into my factory amplifier and my factory amplifier is running all that information to the speakers. Now, this is a real problem because I've got from my head unit, I've got stuff going through an amp once and then I've got stuff going through an amp twice. And what I had said earlier is that this particular amp right here uh, is set with a crossover that takes a lot of the um, lows out of the speakers. So essentially, what I want to do is get rid of that sucker right there. So at this point, I have severed the connection to the speakers. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Metra 70 2002 to reestablish that connection and completely bypass that factory amp. Now, if I ever go to sell the car, I can get rid of this guy but the f and plug it back in and take everything back to stock. So let's go get our wiring harness ready for the bypass. Okay, so while I wish I was smart enough to come up with this information on my own, I did not. So let's go ahead and give credit to its originator. Uh, I originally found this article here on Savage Home Automation, which references this forum post right here. And if we click on that, we end up at uh, z71tahoe-suburban.com. And uh, the really smart guy is this guy right here, Matt, who posted this PDF. If I go back to this article right here by Robert Savage, Robert has uh, included a link to the PDF right here factory high pass crossover bypass all right so that's that right there and then just coming back this Robert guy took what the original guy did and did a step by step by step with tons and tons and tons of pictures to uh, go along with the work so what I'm gonna be working off is this right here so once again uh, this is from savagehomeautomation.com which is based off of Matt's post on z71tahosuburban.com. So thanks to those guys. And I'll include links to both of those in the description of this video. All right, on with the labor. One thing to take into consideration is if you want to continue using your D-pillar tweeters and your subwoofer, you will need to purchase the uh, uh, Metra 70-2002 and the Metra 71-2002. If you want to use those rear, rear, rear speakers and sub, and essentially your configuration is going to look like this. Now, I could care less uh, about that stuff because I have wired my sub directly into the amp and I could care less about the tweeters. Uh, I don't need to get the 71 2002. Uh, all I'm going to worry about is this. This is going to be my configuration here. I only need the one harness because I'm completely bypassing the factory amplifier and I could care less whether those rear speakers work or not. So this is what I'm going to be doing right here. Okay, the first thing I have to do is show off the workbench because it's clean for the first time in months. Clean. That's as clean as my workbench ever gets. All right, let's take a look at what we got here. We got this Metra 70-2002. And this is what it looks like right here. All right. Now, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these pins out one by one. We're going to take them out. Directions say to use a little paper clip, push those babies out. So, see how that goes. All right. So, the first thing we want to do is uh, get all these pins out. You have to be careful because we're going to reuse the pins. So, I think what I'm going to do is all right, there's that side. So there's a, a notch right here. There's a notch on the 1B side that goes right there. Hopefully that's, hopefully that's focused. So get that guy out of there. All right, now we're gonna use the, make sure we don't break those. We're gonna to try to use this guy to, oh, too big, too big. Let's go with the smaller one. Kind of see it coming on the other side here. Now there's one. Many, many more to go.
All right, once you've successfully gotten all these wires out of here, all right, so of all these wires, uh, we're essentially gonna be using eight of them, and we're going to be placing them into specific holes, and looping them around, and then placing them into their associated holes. Uh, however, we don't have an end here, so for all the wires that we're not going to be using, we're gonna to need to take this terminal end right here, we're gonna end up cutting this wire, soldering it together with this wire so that we essentially have something that looks like that when it's done. So each of our wires are gonna look like this when they're done. So uh, in order to do this step, uh, I've got my helping hands, uh, some solder, shrink wrap, and a soldering iron. Uh, and some wire cutters and uh, snippers if you got them. All right, so our next step is gonna be covering up this exposed area here, and that's where the heat shrink comes in. And we'll just slip that right over there. You can use a lighter for this, but if you happen to have a heat gun. Heat gun works really nice. Okay, so after the soldering, you should be left with uh, eight wires with a terminal at each end. Time to get back to the directions. Let's see. So the wire collars don't really matter. They're all the same gauge. Uh, what does matter is making sure that you get them in their respective homes. This is the A side, as you can see by my thumb. It says 1A all the way up to 12 to the right. And then if you flip the sucker over, you got... 1B right to the far right. It starts at 1B and it goes to the left to 12. So make sure you get your A side and your B side correctly. Here's kind of what we're after. And I'm just gonna wire this thing up. I'll start with A1 to A9 with the red wire. Give me some red wire. All right, so here's my red wire. This is my a side, so A1, and that's my B side. Here goes nothing. There's my A1. And he's pinned in. And he clicks, and he's gonna go into A9. All right, A1, A9. Second one is a green wire. A2, clicked into place. All right, if you got a meter, if you got a meter that tests continuity, which means if you got a meter that's got one of these uh, 
little symbols right here. One of these symbols right here. That means it can test for continuity, which means it can test whether a circuit is completed or not. So to give you an example, if I touch this to that end and here to here, then I know my circuit is complete. So what I want to make sure of is that So essentially if I touch my A, I'm touching right now my A1 and my A9. And I got continuity, that means it's going through. So now I'm going to do my second one. And there's eight. Um, now, I need to make sure I get the right side. There's the one with the extra long This red one acting very, very, there we go. All right, so that's that. And this guy back on. And he's on there nice and good now to protect those guys. All set. Let's go see if it works. Let's see if we can get this thing in. If you push on your glove compartment, it'll swing all the way open. All right, once you get this baby open, you see the silver tab right here? There's a black tab on top of it. See, I can get that enough light in there to see the black tab. I'm gonna pull up and out on that black tab uh, to make unplugging this blue connector easier. I don't think I can do it with one hand. Nope, nope. All right, with the tab undone, I can kind of move this guy around. There we go, I'm just gonna move them up enough to where I can get this, squeeze this guy right here. All right, there we go. All right, obviously I got the female end here, and I got male ends here, so I'm just gonna assume that this plugs into the other guy. We'll see what happens. You'll notice there's a notch here, right there. So you can't do this wrong, because there's a notch there too. So you just match up the notches, and you should be good to go. Let me see what happens here. Well, they're together, but the real test is turning on the stereo and seeing if everything works. Okay, so I can report that uh, all four speakers work exactly as they're supposed to. The subwoofer works great. Front speakers and the back speakers never sounded so good. And now the door speakers are getting lows. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and tuck that thing back in there. Uh, do the back, tuck that thing back in there. Uh, I fixed the little black clip and, uh, and shut everything up and I'm good to go. And it's definitely, definitely worth it. The frequency range, if that's what you call it, uh, in the speakers is, is undoubtedly better. All right, reaching around and getting in there and getting that clip on was a little bit of a hassle. I actually cut myself in a couple different places, but say la vie. And I think what I'm gonna just do is take this guy and shove him back up in there. So, I think I ought to do it. This concludes the video for the uh, amp bypass. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment and I'll be sure to get back to you.
Thanks.